friends, um, thank you for the invitation to this very interesting seminar. And um, I, I confess that I would have liked to be in Pisa <laughs> today, but uh, of course uh, it's impossible due to uh, so many restraints. Uh, in fact, I would have uh, thought that I will speak after uh, the presentation of Dragos, but it's, there is no problem uh, even so, because he was going to present uh, more of the inside uh, history of this um, As you of this story. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, now it's okay, because okay, you have okay. already introduced me, it's, there Great. is no problem actually. Um, but I just, um, what I was thinking to, to set, to present today was uh, more like, um, comments uh, and, uh, thoughts on, uh, and the history on the, the facts that happened and, um, the judgments of the, um, uh, CGU and the decisions of the Romanian constitutional court, but in a context, not really in a succession of events. Uh, anyway, um, these are very hard times to talk about the rule of law nationally and internationally um, because law in general and the rule of law in more particularly have received in the last days and weeks strong blows from uh, and are still shattered from the, the, the events that happened. Uh, even the European Commission and the other uh, European actors who used to have a powerful discourse on your own rule of law conditionalities seem to have adopted a milder position because of the war and um, of all the, the, uh, the, these uh, unfortunate events. On the other hand, uh, the discussion on the rule of law uh, has never been as topical as it is nowadays when the European democracies have been facing so many challenges uh, for more than a de decade now. Uh, Romania, as uh, Nedim also pointed out, uh, has entered the club of countries where the rule of law is challenged rather recently compared to Hungary or Poland, uh, more precisely in 2017, uh, but the situation escalated rather quickly and the first attacks uh, were launched against the judiciary in various forms, political pressures, uh, dismissals, see the Kerveshi case in 2018 with the very uh, strong contribution uh, of the Romanian Constitutional Court and, of course, the changes of legislation which determined this succession of um, uh, CGEU judgments and uh, this rather uh, schizophrenic dialogue, uh, if I may call it like this, with the Romanian Constitutional Court. Um, so, um, I'm also reminding that the rule of law challenges in Romania are not new ever since the pre-accession, as uh, Nadim has also pointed out, uh, even since the pre-accession negotiation uh, with the EU, despite the constitutional statement that uh, Romania is a rule of law based state from Article 1 of the Constitution, the matter of the respect of the rule of law has been a hot potato for the Romanian authorities. The situation ended up by making the object of the uh, cooperation and verification mechanism in the shape of the two main benchmarks thereby set forth, the anti-corruption fight and independence of the judiciary, uh, both being salient aspects of the broader concept of rule of law. Uh, sadly, uh, 15 years after the accession, these benchmarks are still not met. We are awaiting the 2022 uh, report, the CBM report, without much optimism. Um, anyway, uh, to um, nuance a little bit what Nedim has said about the anti-corruption. Uh, the problem is uh, that anti-corruption has never really been taken seriously by uh, the Romanian political class, political environment. Although corruption is, of course, a huge problem in the Romanian society as a whole, and of course, it is a huge threat against the rule of law. Uh, but as it has never been actually taken seriously, except for, uh, of, of course, in, in formal ways by establishing the uh, uh, anti-corruption directorate, by establishing uh, uh, the procedural ways to fight uh, against it, uh, the, the politicians them, themselves 
were um, quite um, embarrassed uh, or even scared some of them of this phenomenon and that's why when it started to grow when it started to produce actual effects uh, things uh, started to be uh, uncomfortable for the uh, anti-corruption prosecutors and uh, for the anti-corruption phenomenon um, development uh, and especially since 2017 um, and that that led to uh, long uh, periods of backsliding since then despite the progress that has been uh, reached at some point in time uh, in this the whole picture, an institution that was praised in 2012 and 2013 for its, and I quote, contribution to the development of the rule of law, even by the CVM reports, uh, the, Con the Constitutional Court, of course. I will not discuss the situation in 2012, 2013, but uh, as a, a small um, um, Parenthesis, I would like to point out that the, this uh, type of uh, involvement of the Constitutional Court in the political uh, world is not new. It has been ha it, it has happened in 2012 as well, uh, in a different uh, way to, to a different extent. So uh, I, I just I wrote about this uh, in other uh, in other papers. But anyway, uh, this institution that has been praised even by the European Commission for uh, its uh, involvement in, the, in supporting the rule of law is now the flag bearer of the opponents to the respect of the rule of law. And uh, as an expression of the EU law primacy uh, particularly. Um, the recent cases are uh, well known and Jankos will present them, so I will not talk about them, but I would rather try to clarify some of the aspects raised here by Nadim uh, from a more theoretical point of view, but of course with, um, with um, references to the, uh, to the practice. First of all, the rule of law in the Romanian constitution. How is the rule of law um, enshrined in the Romanian constitution. It's the article one, paragraph three, uh, whereby the rule of law is made a feature of the Romanian state and justice is a supreme value in this context. Uh, there is also article one, paragraph five, which uh, enshrines the supremacy of the constitution and, uh, the and states also that the observers of the constitution uh, its supremacy and the laws shall be mandatory. Um, there is also the uh, a text that um, that enshrines the European rule of law, Article 148, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, which says that as a result of the accession, the provisions of the constituent treaties of the European Union, as well as the other mandatory community regulations, shall take precedence over the opposite provisions of the national laws in compliance with the provisions of the Accession Act. So th this is the basis uh, for uh, the recognition even of the decision uh, 928 uh, slash, uh, 2006 uh, of the Commission, which established the uh, cooperation and verification mechanism. So these are the main uh, provisions of the Constitution, of course, uh, only the uh, uh, essential ones, uh, which uh, establish the rule of law, the principle of the rule of law. Now, uh, on the matter of constitutional identity, I would like to make some, uh, some remarks. Uh, after almost a decade since the first reference to, the, uh, consti to constitutional identity in its case law, the Constitutional Court uh, made it by the famous or infamous decision uh, 390 uh, from 2021, the main obstacle to applying the primacy of, the e of EU law. For years, the court avoided to define what constitutional identity means. It avoided to give this constitutional identity also a civic meaning and used it mainly in a ethnocentric poster identity uh, to quote another scholar, which is very close to me and who wrote a very interesting article, which I uh, hope that will uh, be published this year. Uh, Giuseppe, you know him, it's my husband, Manuel. 
so um, maybe he wrote a, a lot about constitutional identity because he's also a historian. Uh, and this, um, uh, and thus the court has never achieved an identity review by reference to European law in its case law. Truth be told, it hasn't had many opportunities to do so because only in the last five years, this matter of the primacy of uh, the CVM has become an issue due to the preliminary references that was were filed by national courts to the CGEU uh, in their attempt to avoid the application of the, the new legislative provisions that were obviously contrary to the rule of law, especially the ones establishing the SIOG. In this decision, uh, 390 of 2021, the court vaguely referred to articles 11, uh, point, uh, 11 paragraph 3 and uh, 152 of the Constitution, uh, which establish, uh, the last one establishes the eternity clauses, the, the article 11.3. Uh, is about the uh, constitutionality of uh, international treaties. So uh, the constitution mainly trumps international treaties. They, it prevents their entry into force if, if they are contrary to the constitution. Uh, so it seemed to be equating the concept of constitutional identity with the eternity, the, the general eternity clause of the constitution, but without actually justifying such a choice and especially without justifying why matters relating to the organization of the judiciary should be included in this concept, because the organization of the judiciary, as even the, the CGEU pointed out in one of the judgments, is not, um, is not imposed, but is also not a part of, the, um, of any uh, tradition, uh, common tradition. Uh, therefore, uh, the Romanian Constitutional Court used a parallel discourse rather than engaging in a dialogue with the CGEU. And uh, the CGEU also uh, said that in its, late, in its uh, latest judgment from um, 22 February, uh, because there, and where it, uh, it uh, noted that the RCC didn't even make a preliminary reference request itself as it should have if it wanted to, uh, to engage in a dialogue. Instead, the RCC used the constitutional identity as a screen, and a very artificial one, uh, to its true intentions, uh, which were to prevent national courts to disapply or from disapplying national legislation, which was contrary to the EU law regarding independence of justice, um, i.e. Uh, Article 19, Paragraph 1 of the Treaty. Moreover, it went beyond its constitutional role of negative legislation, legislator and applied formal and informal pressures on judges in order to achieve this goal. Letters, besides the decision, uh, letters, press releases and other, uh, other statements that made reference to disciplinary sanctions, uh, which led also the CGEU to, to clearly state in its, late, in its uh, judgment of uh, 21st of December, uh, that the situation is aggravated by the potential threat to initiate disciplinary proceedings against individual judges who would apply the EU law despite the constitutional court uh, court's decision. Uh, because these disciplinary proceedings can be and were have been initiated according to the law on uh, the status of magistrates. Uh, the challenges against the judiciary also, I, I have to point out that they are not new in Romania. And in 2004, also as a result of the uh, uh, pre-accession negotiations, uh, Romania implemented the Euro model of judicial self-government in the form of a new, improved and autonomous Superior Council of Magistracy. Um, and this generated a true hope towards a consolidated judicial independence. However, as I was pointing out in another, in an older article that I wrote in 2018 in German Law Journal, this system has not been exempted from challenges and perils. These perils and challenges did not only come from uh, the outside of the system, but many times they came from the inside, as it seems to be happening even at the present moment. Um, 
Uh, another uh, another point that I wanted I wanted to touch uh, is the one of the CVM, its nature and effects, because it has been a great discussion also in the uh, um, in the political uh, sphere and also in uh, the uh, this rather uh, strange dialogue between the courts. I will not go into details about the nature of the CVM, but I'd rather make some comments on its effects on the rule of law. Uh, despite obvious progresses that have been made, uh, especially until 2016, more or less, uh, there was also a significant backsliding, obviously, and without going into so many details um, which are presented by the Commission in its latest reports, I still have to agree only partially with uh, Professor Kochenov's statement that was also quoted by Nadim. Uh, that the CVM is now redundant. It has a degree of redundancy only insofar as its results haven't been used for imposing stronger conditionalities. Um, in a very recent study on the rule of law report and the EU monitoring uh, and enforcement of Article 2 TEU values written by Petra Bard and Laurent Peck, the authors pointed out uh, that, and I quote, the Commission may be criticized for having spent years stressing the EU's rule of law toolbox's alleged insufficiencies and seeking refuge in the creation of new tools to avoid having to enforce the tools it has, unquote. Uh, the CVM might be such a tool that has been used but uh, that has not actually reached its goals also because some uh, maybe allegedly uh, some inaction from the part of the uh, of the Commission. I think this is could be a starting point of any discussion on the effects of the CVM and of um, of similar mechanisms. Um, thank you. I think that uh, that's all I wanted to say. I can comment, of course, on other. I don't want to monopolize the discussion too much. Thank you.